Okay, today I need to get something off my chest. It's the answer to a question that's been bugging me since the first grade. To many, the question may very well seem inconsequential, but for a person like me whose passion is mathematics, this one decision represents one of the most important choices of my life. What is my favorite number? At first I thought about going for something kooky like pi or e, but then I just thought that sounded irrational. Then I thought about choosing something utilitarian like 1, or maybe I'd go with something with some symmetry like 22, or with something that just felt right like the number 63. But after many years of mulling it over in my head, I finally come to a decision. A decision that could rock the very foundation of my career as a mathematician. My favorite number is 9. Now given my interest in magic, I guess my decision shouldn't be all that surprising. After all, 9 is widely considered to be the most magical number. Perhaps it's because it shows up in so many weird places. Baseball has nine innings, cats have nine lives, and I'm on cloud nine just thinking about it. Take this Rubik's Cube, for example. There are nine stickers on each side, making 54 in all. If we add up five and four, we get nine. If we think of it as a cube, its dimensions are three by three by three, which makes 27. Again, if we add up the two and seven, we get nine. Coincidence? I think not. It turns out that all of the multiples of 9 seem to exhibit this property. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. If we add up the digits in any of those numbers, we always get 9. If we continue on, you'll find that the next few multiples follow another interesting pattern, namely that each one is created by reversing the digits of one of the previous numbers. And if we add up each of these pairs, we find that the sum of each of them is 99. It seems as if 9s are everywhere indeed. But do these patterns still hold up when we're dealing with larger numbers? I mean, what if I have a multiple with three digits, like 9 times 13? That makes 117, and it turns out that 1 plus 1 plus 7 equals 9 again. Let's go crazy and find a multiple that's really big. 96,748 times 9. We end up with 870732, and if we add up those digits, we end up with 27. This seems to violate our previous pattern until you realize that if we add up these two digits, we again return to 9. And it turns out that even numbers that aren't multiples of 9 still have a strange relationship with 9. For example, if I take 83, mix up the digits, and subtract, I get 45, which I know is a multiple of 9 because 4 plus 5 equals 9. Interestingly enough, mathematicians actually have a name for this idea of summing up the digits of a number. They call it a digital root. So, 76 is just 7 plus 6, which equals 13. We add up the 1 and the 3, and we get 4. So 4 is the digital root of 76. Surprisingly, this digital root tells us something about 76's relationship with the number 9. You see, if we divide 76 by 9, we end up with some quotient, but more importantly, we end up with a remainder that matches the number's digital root. Since this works for all numbers, we can apply this little known fact to a pretty baffling little magic trick. Ask your friend to write down any number without you seeing. I'll just use the serial number I found in this dollar bill. Incidentally, if we add up these numbers, we get 21. This means that its digital root is 3, which would also be the remainder if we were to divide this serial number by 9. But of course, your friend doesn't actually have to figure this out. Then, ask him to rearrange his digits into a new number. Because of the commutative property of addition, I know that in this case, the digital root must still be 3. Now ask your friend to subtract his two numbers. Believe it or not, we know something really interesting about his final result. Because the digital roots of each number are equal, when they are subtracted, your friend's new number will have a digital root of 0, which, in a base 10 numbering system like ours, is equal to having a digital root of 9. This means that it's divisible by 9. By the way, you may want to let your friend use a calculator on this part, since not all people are math geniuses like yourself, and if he screws up his arithmetic, the trick just won't work. Then ask him to secretly circle one of his digits, but not to choose zero because you want him to actually be concentrating on a value. Finally, ask him to read out the other digits to you in any order he wants. All you have to do is secretly add these numbers in your head as he reads them. When he's finished, just figure out the digital root of your total. In this case, we add the numbers and get 39. 3 plus 9 is 12, and 1 plus 2 leads us to 3. Since we know the digital root of his number must be 9, I know I need 6 more to reach 9, which means that I know with 100% certainty that the missing digit is 6. Ta-da! So why is 9 so magical? Well, it's because it's the last digit in our base 10 numbering system. If we were born with 7 fingers, we would probably do all our math in base 7, and 6 would be the most magical number. But we weren't, so we don't, and 9 still reigns supreme. What properties of 9 can you find?